Good morning and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Lent. My name is Pastor Mary Armstrong Reiner and I welcome you to worship online today with St. John Luther Church in Griffin, Georgia. We're glad to have you with us and um, if you have our bulletin you may pull that out or you can go to our webpage stjohngriffin.org and press on um, our bulletin and follow along with us for the service today. We begin this morning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, our sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Let us journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our mission here at St. John is we trust God and invite you to experience God's inclusive love. Our opening hymn this morning is Now the Greed Blade Rises. grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Church of God. 
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself and in mercy, you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the spirit that through life and death, we may live in your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with our readings of the day. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The epistle for this morning is Hebrews chapter 5, verses 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation 
for all who believe him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The Holy Gospel this day is according to St. John, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 20. Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, then what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. And this is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My heart this day is stuck on the phrase, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much light. This scripture has been an important one to me since my teenage years. Some of you have heard me talk about a retreat called Teens Encounter Christ that I made when I was 16 years old. And this scripture was at the heart of the whole three days we were together. Our first day was die day. It was a day to look at ourselves, to take an honest look at our lives and to reflect upon what Jesus did for each one of us. And that scripture has been a profound and strong scripture all of my life. And has spoken to me, not only from making that retreat, but also being a farmer's daughter. You know, Jesus used these kind of stories because it was an agrarian society. And people understood about the earth and about agriculture. Because everyone was a, a, maybe not a farmer, but they sowed seeds. They raised food. And that some of you may have raised a garden or raising a garden now. But it's not so much today as it was so imminent and needed in those days by every family to raise a garden. So when they heard the scripture, they knew what Jesus was talking about. I always think about wheat because I grew up on a farm when I was a child, we grew wheat. And I always think about winter wheat because winter wheat is a very particular kind of hardy seed. It is put in the ground after the fall harvest is taken out, when the beans and the corn and maybe milo or um, has been taken out of the ground, then this seed is the last thing done before the winter comes. The seed lays in the ground throughout the winter, through the cold, through the snow, through the rain. It sets there. But when the spring comes, like the spring is coming now, and the warmth and the sun comes out and the water goes down into the ground and the snow melts away, the seed warms up. And from that warmth, the seed breaks open. And that which kept that germ of the seed inside, it dies. So that with the water that comes in the spring, it can grow to new life. 
You can see winter wheat in the places where it's still grown because it comes out and it's the little, the green you see coming out of the ground. It's before anything else is planted and it, it's taken later in the spring, early summer. I can remember in my own family of the growing of the wheat and it was always a good year if wheat was taken out of the ground, if it was all harvested by the 4th of July. It meant that our whole family could celebrate the 4th of July together and my dad didn't have to be in the field. I think about those seeds and about other seeds that we plant and I think about what's happening in our world today. And I can't help but think about the many ways that I'm missing this sense that we are dying to ourselves so that we can rise to new life in Jesus. Let me just explain that a little bit. I'm not necessarily saying just you as you watch this, but I'm saying our country and our world, there's so much hatred and division and violence against people. People who may not look exactly like you or me, but they have been made the other. They have been called the foreigner, the stranger, even though they may be just like you and I, an American from another country, an immigrant. And my heart is so troubled by the hatred just so easily shared online. A friend of mine put a note up the other day and all she said was, hey, I, for those of you who watch Jeopardy, do you like, how do you feel about Katie Couric being the host? Well, I happened to catch one of the days. I like Jeopardy, but I don't, it's not like an everyday thing, but I know plenty of people who watch Jeopardy every day. And you know, everybody's got their opinion, strong opinions, because it's not Alex Trebek. None of these people are Alex Trebek. They can't be. So nobody's gonna be able to fill the shoes like Alex did. Let's Let's just put that right there, okay? But my friend was just asking the opinion. And, and so I, you know, I go by a lot of stuff these days, but I decided to look at it thinking it wasn't a big deal. And I, I couldn't believe some of the comments. One person was like, well, she's just fake. And somebody else said, oh, I hate her. I was so incensed. I wrote, I had to write a note. Well, I didn't have to, but I wrote a note and I said, look, you may not like Katie Couric, but to say you hate her or she's fake, do you know her personally? You don't have to agree with her opinions. You may not think she's the best host, but really, you hate her? I just, no wonder we have the problems we do. It just seems like it's so easy to hate people who are different from us or think differently from us or look differently than us or have a different status or different lifestyle. And it's just so easy to hate. And I keep thinking, that's not what Jesus would want from us. Too many people have, have become hate the sinner, but hate the sin, but love the sinner. Really? Is it your job to judge somebody else and decide why not look at ourselves a little bit more deeply? Why not die to our own selves, to our own issues, to our own, what you can name, I can name a hundred things. Pride, envy, jealousy, um, humiliation, anger, um, different, somebody's different than us or you. Um, somebody thinks differently than you. There's so many things that can make us just hate other people. Is this really dying to our own sin? That's what I learned all those years ago on Teens of Counter Christ, that this dying is a daily dying to ourselves. It's, it's making us not most important, but putting Christ as primary in our lives. And yes, that's difficult, but that's why it's a daily living it out. It's, it's taking seriously that God is calling us in our lives to die to ourselves, to rise with Christ, but to live in a new way, with a new life and a new heart, to open ourselves up, to open up the circle. 
You know, our the Wednesday night group I've been doing has been reading a book called Boundless Compassion. I highly recommend this book, whether you it's a something you can do daily on your own. But this book, I would say I can say for myself and my feeling is that most of the group would concur. This book has been a very deeply faithful and challenging book for us. And this past week, uh, every week has a different theme. And this past week has been from hostility to hospitality. There's a number of things that strike me in here, but I wanted to share just a couple things from uh, the first day, the second day called The Two Wolves in Us. And it says this quote from Rick Hansen, each of us has two wolves in the heart, one of love and one of hate. Everything depends on which one we feed each day. And in this story, Sister Jean Rupp shares the story of how she had encountered a young woman close to where she lived with a very dirty black coat and she didn't look good and she was going through garbage and she could tell she was looking for things to recycle. And she noticed that she was pulling out coupons. And so she had her coupons from the paper and she took a $20 bill and she went out to the young woman and she talked to her. And she asked her, she said, I see you're looking for things. And she said, yes, I'm, I'm here staying right now with my dad because I'm trying to get back on my feet. So the sister um, gave her the coupons with the money and said, well, I hope that this will help you some. And she said that the lady went to hug her and she was covered in garbage and that she realized that she had pulled back for a second because she didn't want that garbage to touch her. But then she stopped for a moment and realized how Jesus opened himself up to touching and embracing the lepers, the, the most unclean in a way. And so she stepped into the embrace with the young woman. She goes on to talk about you know, her own instinctiveness of pulling back from her, of pulling away, and yet thinking about what Jesus might do in that moment. And she, instead of her own fear blocking the way for her to ex not accept this embrace, she opened herself up and accepted whatever the woman had on her that would get on her so that she could really, I would say, be Christ to this woman. She goes on to share about the two, the stories of the, um, the story of the two wolves. And uh, she shares that Rick Hansen shares a story of a Native American grandmother. And she says that she was, um, people in her community saw her as a kind-hearted, wise elder. And he asked her, why do people see you that way? And this is what she said. She answered by saying that a few, that there were two wolves fighting within her, a wolf of love and a wolf of hate. She went on to explain that which wolf grew stronger would depend on the one she fed each day. The grandmother was obviously feeding the wolf of love. She goes on to talk about, we have quite a few different types of wolves in us, that it's a metaphor of how we envision our relationship with humanity. She says, for the world, for the wolf of love, the view is wide and open to all. It is not um, stopping others from being a part of this inclusive love, but that they are welcome. And that, that love is expressed in a variety of ways, she says, including in compassion, kindness, mercy, understanding, hospitality, justice, charity, and she says all the ways in which we approach others with a sincere desire of welcome and acceptance, regardless of a vast array of differences. She goes on to say that the wolf of hate, on the other hand, is a metaphor of the quick snapping responses that arises from a tribal sense of safety, security, loyalty, and protection. It guards us and it reacts with fear and aggression against them. Snarls towards anyone posing a real or illusory threat. 
She said this wolf takes many forms, including prejudice, aggression, and animosity, degradation, oppression, revenge, hostility, revulsion, humiliation, and any other response that judges and treats another human being as a threat or an enemy, viewing them as unequal and inferior. She says that we can't get rid of the wolf of hate because it is a natural response of our instinctual reptilian part of our brain. The wolf of hate is deeply embedded both in the human evolutionary past and in each person's brain today, ready to howl at any threat. But, she says, that as we live with love and hate together, while we cannot kill the wolf of hate, the aversion in such an attempt would actually create what we're trying to destroy. But we can watch that wolf carefully, keep it tethered and limit its alarm, its righteousness, its grievances, its resentments, its contempt and prejudice. And meanwhile, we keep nourishing and encouraging the wolf of love. I love this so much. I think it speaks to me in my own life and it's a reminder to me and I hope to all of you that we need to continue to focus on and to grow in our faith of openness and inclusiveness because as the gospel reminds us, Jesus says that he came for all. You know, this past week has been just a devastating week here in Metro Atlanta with the killings of the six Asian women and the two other people by a young man who had proclaimed faith. And yet, as I read more and more of his story, I began to realize that, and I'm not saying, well, I am concerned about the church he came from because the stories, and I've read several of them, that he came from a background of, of just this real sense of God, you know, being so against these things that it, it drove in his mind that he was unworthy and unloved. And what did he do? He acted out on that, but instead of inflicting it upon himself, he inflicted it on people who did not deserve to be shot or to die. It is a painful thing and it's a long conversation that we could have. It could be weeks of conversation and yet my heart goes out and mourns with the Asian American community who have suffered so much at various times in our country's history and suffers again today. And I know that for some of you that may upset you. I'm okay with that because I I am trying to feed the wolf of love and I I want to recognize the pain of any group who has been treated so badly and blamed for things that are not their fault like the COVID-19. And I want to continue to work for better relations with all groups of people and see them for who they are. Not to say I don't see who they are or their color but to see them in all their beauty and their glory and to recognize them, that God created them in God's image in all the various colors and hues and nations. These are God's people. You know, in this story, it talks about the seed and, and I, we went to the store today and I picked up a few seeds because I was thinking about how we're all kind of different seeds, you know? Some of us are lettuce, some of us are lavender. Some of us may be sunflowers, you know? And I was looking at the different seeds and, you know, some are big. So a sunflower has a good size. It's, you may not be a boy, just dropped it. <laughs> but the sunflower is a, is a really, for a seed, it's a pretty good sized seed. Then you get to the um, lettuce, which by the way, there's different times as anybody who gardens knows. Uh, the people I know who garden lettuce often plant it on the snow in the Midwest because it's one of the earliest crops to go in. But so the the lettuce is a little bit smaller, but the lavender, I can't even take out. It's so 
so tiny. And yet, it takes these seeds, the lavender, the lettuce, the sunflower, to go into the earth to have the right conditions, the right time, the right temperature to be able for their seed to burst open, to die, and to grow, and to bring beauty and food to our world and to our life. Jesus knew what he was doing when he talked about it, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, because he wanted us to think about our own lives, our own heart being a seed, that we die daily to our own needs, our own wants, so that we might more fully follow Jesus. We might more fully put Jesus first in our life and put our prejudices, our desires, our wants behind us. So we can follow like the disciples with our whole life. We can follow Jesus and live for him. The question today is, what will you and I do? This is a daily walk of life and of faith. This encourages us and also calls us to look at our own lives. As we draw closer to Holy Week, as we walk in this mist of Lent, we are called to reflect upon our own lives, our own way. How are we not opening ourselves up to grow to new life in Jesus? What is it we are being challenged to look at in our own life? Is there a group of people we need to be praying for that we can let go of our prejudices or hatred or blindness or ignorance about? Is there someone that we bear anger and hostility towards that we've just hung on to for so long that it's just become a part of us? And instead of trying to die to that and let God help change us so that we can forgive and let go, we've just hung on so long. Only you know the answer to these questions for yourself, but we are, I believe, are all called to look at our own lives, to be like these seeds and to die daily in our walk with Christ. God renews us each day, forgives us each day, graces us, but calls us also. Our part in all of this is to, to open ourselves up, to be willing to embrace like Sister Joyce Rupp did, the young woman with the garbage all over her jacket to feed the wolf of love, to have the warmth of God's love fill us so that we might bloom and blossom forth. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it gains new life. We are on a journey. We are on our way to the cross. I want to encourage you today and in the days to come, like me, to continue to die daily to ourselves so that on Easter Day we may rise to new life with the hope and love that God gives us to embrace and to love all people made in God's image. Amen. Our hymn of the day, which will be sung twice, is Change My Heart, O God.
the church throughout the world and the church throughout the ages, we profess our faith, the faith in which we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue our prayers today, your response is, your mercy is great. You wash us through and through, O God, and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. We ask that you bless the ministry of Augustinian Lutheran School in Guatemala and St. Johannes in Bavaria. We pray for Grace Missions and Shamewall Orphanage in Haiti. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Protect those who serve in the military, especially we pray for Sequoia, Chris, and Chance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying and all who grieve, especially today we pray for Kathleen, Charlie, William, Bob, Susan and David, Maureen, April, Andy and June, John, Sarah, Catherine, Micah, Terry, Debbie and family, Bill and Elizabeth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those celebrating baptisms, Tina, Kimberly, Walt, expectant parents, Bobby and Candace, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We lift up all others we name in our hearts or on our lips at this time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, we also pray for all those who have been affected by the killings in Atlanta this past week. We pray for you to give comfort and guidance, especially for the Asian Americans who live in fear at this time. We pray that we would walk alongside them and be there to stand with them as they work for peace and justice in our land. Be with those who are struggling with all that has happened and help us always to open it wide our arms to embrace all who seek to know you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Is we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also, also with, with you. you. I share with one another a sign of peace and ask that you would receive God's peace today. We continue with our special music of the day.
As we come to our offering, I just want to thank all of you who continue to support the ministry of St. John Lutheran Church. This has not been an easy year. It's been so difficult. And yet so many of you have been so faithful and we are so grateful as we continue to do the ministry God has called us to do in Griffin, in Georgia, in our country, and in our world. Uh, you are more than welcome to go on to our website, stjohngriffin.org, and you can give a donation there. You can drop off your check, bring it today for a drive-by communion, or bring it throughout the week. Um, or you can have it sent through your bank or credit union. Well, we want to just thank you. And now I invite you to join me in the offering prayer. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray as we sing our Lord's Prayer this Lenten season. today are please come by if you can for a holy communion we will have it offered from 11 30 to 12 30 today drive by communion this will be our last sunday of drive by communion only next sunday palm sunday we will all gather at church at 10 o'clock for worship you are more than uh, welcome to bring your lawn chairs to sit out in front of your vehicles we do ask you to mask um, we know many of you have gone shots but we're still watching out for each other we will have palms that will be given out to everyone. We won't have a procession like normal, but we will still celebrate Palm Sunday together. And it will be wonderful to have worship outside together. And I pray for a beautiful day. So we hope you will come. Um, thank you for those of you who have brought butterfly coloring pages completed back. We are still in need of many more of those. So if you are willing to... Um, bring those back and I've got more to hand out if you'd like those we will collect those um, through uh, probably uh, say a week from Wednesday um, because we want to get them all together um, for Easter and also if you have some that you've not counted out bring those back too we're gonna write notes with them and send them with um, some drinks and some uh, bags of separate bags of snacks for the teachers and staff at Moreland Elementary just to say thank you for all they've done for the kids in, in our area. I will be delivering those before um, the end of, well, probably right before Monday, Thursday, we'll be delivering them. And if you have any um, individual bags of goodies you'd like to bring by, even if you got just a few, we'll put them all together and take those. Um, I'll be delivering those to them. And just, just to say thanks. So um, we'll, 
we'll be able to uh, just just to give thanks to them for all the good things that they have done. Um, let's see. So the schedule, worship schedules in here. Palm Sunday will be outside together. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday will be online only um, because they'll be on Facebook. And uh, hopefully we can get them ready in time that we can get them so they'll be on YouTube so you can watch them there as well. They'll be at 7 p.m. on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. And then Easter Day, we will have worship outside at 10 a.m. Uh, and we will have drive-by communion for those who maybe aren't comfortable coming to worship both on Palm Sunday and on Easter, uh, starting a little after 11 o'clock till about 11.30. Uh, right now, it says that the coffee hour is at 11, but actually we'll be changing that time. And um, I will, I've got to go back and look at my notes. I think we moved it to 11.30 to 12.30, but I need to verify that so I don't give you the wrong time on that. Um, I will be out delivering uh, communion to a few people uh, in the next two weeks, but I and I will be at church. So if you need me, please feel free to get a hold of me. I'm normally off on Mondays and Fridays, uh, but if it's an emergency, please feel free to get a hold of me. If you don't reach me, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, also, our crackling and change bucket for March, we are, the monies we are collecting will go for the ELCA World Hunger Appeal Program. There's some information in our bulletin, but basically it supports a variety of programs throughout our country and our world from health clinics and microloans, food pantries, soup kitchens. Um, so please give as you can of your crackling and your change to the bucket for this um, month of March. And thank you as always for all of your support. And now receive God's blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. May God bless you that you may be a blessing to others. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Our closing hymn is, Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. To keep his statutes still Oh, that my God would grant me grace To know and do his will Order my footsteps by your word And make my heart sincere Let sin have no dominion, Lord, but Keep my conscience clear. Assist my soul to wrap to stray, a strict watch to keep. And should I hear forget your way, restore your wandering sheep. Make me to walk in your command. Tis a delightful road, nor let my head or heart or hands up and again, my God. As we go on our way, let us remember, through Jesus Christ, we are an equipping and responding church that continues to grow, impact, and transform lives. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.